Hello everyone, welcome to the plot digitization video. In this video, I will be going over how to use web plot digitizer to help digitize curves, as well as go over the MATLAB curve fitting toolbox to curve fit your data and use it to analyze in your code for the project. Now, first things first, what is plot digitization? Well, plot digitization is a way in which we can take an existing graph in the form of a picture and use software such as Web Plot Digitizer or any other software of your choice to plot data points that will allow us to extract and recreate this curve and be able to then interpret it and its data points. So to begin, first of all, I'd like to encourage you all to be comfortable using some sort of plot digitization software. For the purposes of this video, I will be going over how to use Webplot Digitizer. Webplot Digitizer is accessible online or there is also a downloadable version. So feel free to choose whichever software you feel it's best for you. Now, if you type in Webplot Digitizer into your Google search engine, you will see that the first link is the one that you'll be looking for. And as you can see on screen, it is available in a desktop version or an online version for both Mac and Windows. Now, I'm just going to be launching now. And as you can see, we now have a screen where we're able to see a cursor as well as a smaller window on the right hand side that showcases a zoomed in version of the image that is in front of us. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is go over and load an image. So I'm going to go to File and click Load Image. Now, I'm going to choose the files that I want. So I'm going to be going over this lift to drag ratio plot. And as you can see, it is asking me to choose the type of plot. This is just an X and Y plot, so I will be choosing that one. And now the next step that we need to do is align the axes. Now, this is a very important step, and we need to make sure to get this right, because this will then determine the scale or the ratio that Webplot will use to plot the points that we'll be using in the future to curve fit our data. So first we'll be going over and selecting our X1 point, which will be our zero here, our X2, which is corresponding to our 700, our Y1, which is corresponding to zero, and our Y2, which corresponds to 18. So now I'm gonna hit the proceed. And as you can see, I have an L over D at different altitude versus true airspeed plot. I'll be going over and doing as the instructions indicated. So as you can see, I'm hovering over the point and on the right hand side, we have the zoomed inversion that allows us to see a little bit more accurately where our points would lie. So the first thing I'm going to do is plot a point as my X1. And now as you can see, my X1 point isn't exactly on the line. So if you find yourself in a situation where you may have not plotted the point exactly where you wanted to, you can easily fix that by using your downward, upward, and side to side arrows on your computer. And I'm just hitting the down arrow and moving it in its corresponding position. Now to plot the second point, all I need to do is simply just tap and make a new point. And that'll automatically label it as X2. And now after X2 has been labeled, we wanna label our Y1, which as you recall, should be the same in this case as our X1, and now I will label our Y2 point. And now I'm just gonna fix it. And now we can see that the axes have been calibrated. It is able to then determine the points that we plot along our curves. So I'm gonna hit the complete button. And now I'm going to be assigning the scale that Webplot will be using for our project. So as you can see at our X1 location, we have zero. At our X2 location, I have it at 600. Our Y location, we start off at zero. And then we go up to our second point, which is at 18. And now this also gives us the option to work with scales that are logarithmically scaled. But in this case, we can see that that's not the case that we'll be using, but it is a tool to note for future projects that you may be working on. So now I'm just gonna hit okay. 
And as you can see, if I hover over the line here, it gives an estimate reading at the right-hand side of the exact location of what it should be. So in this case, it's reading that our X is about 51.5 and our Y is about 0 0.9. So what I'm gonna do now is plot a set of points along my curve in order to recreate this curve. Now you may be wondering how many points is an appropriate amount of points. Well, you should be aiming towards picking an amount of points that allows you to recreate these data points as easily as possible. If you were to only pick the top point and a point somewhere along this curve, you would note that in MATLAB, you would only be plotting the endpoints, which would give you a straight line. So it's important to plot enough points that MATLAB is able to determine the curvature of your plot. So I'm going to start off at the L over D at a height of zero feet. So that's our blue line here. So what I'm going to do is place a point. And as you can see, I've placed a point along this blue curve. And what I'm going to be doing is recreating this process. And using my arrow keys, I'm just going to be aligning it as I go. What would happen if I were to plot a point incorrectly, say here, and then move on to the next point? without realizing I've plotted this point accidentally. Well, we can fix that using our manual extraction. So we're able to adjust a point. So I'm gonna click adjust point. And now I will click the point that I want to adjust. And as you can see, it is now highlighted in green. And I will be using my arrow keys to manually move it to the position where it should have been located. And all I have to do now is go back to add point and I can continue plotting along this curve without any problems. So I'm going to be finishing this off and I'll be right back. Now that I have completed plotting the data set in the blue line, we can see that I've recreated this blue line by just plotting individual points using the manual extraction section here, which allows me to add a point by point. And I'm actually going to do the same thing now, but with an L over D at a height of 15,000 feet. Now, in order to categorize this as two different data sets, first, I will rename the default data set. So I just double clicked it to rename. So I'm going to just rename this data set to H is equal to zero feet. Okay, and in order to add a new data set, I'm just going to go to data set. I'm going to click on it. And then down here, you should be able to see add data set. And this allows me to add either a single data set or multiple data sets, depending on how many lines I want to be digitizing. For the purpose of this video, I will be only digitizing two curves, the one at zero feet and the one at 15,000 feet. So I'm going to rename my second data set height at 15,000 and I'm going to click add single data set. Then as we can see, now we have both data sets on our left hand side. If I click the zero feet data set, it'll send me to our original one. But if I were to click H equals 15,000, we see it has cleared because it is a new data set. And now we can repeat the process that we did before with our new line. So all I'm going to do is just manually add points as we did before along this red curve until it looks something like the zero foot curve. Now that I have finished plotting the points for L over D at a height of 15,000, we're ready to proceed with the next step. So the next step is to export the data sets that we've created. And there's two ways of doing this. So one is we click the data set that we want and we can go to the view data setting. And as you can see, we have our X's and our Y variables. And now we're able to copy this to a clipboard in a text box or we're able to download it directly. Now, the other option, which I'm just going to close this now. The other option is to download both data sets at the same time. So the way I'm going to do so is by clicking data set and I'm going to export all data and I'm going to download it now. And as you can see, it downloads it as an Excel file. 
our data should be saved now as two separate data sets. So as we can see this, our A and our B column are the data for our height at zero feet and our C and D column correspond to our height at 15,000. I just saved it as web plot data for me to use in MATLAB. And before I get to the MATLAB portion, I just wanna quickly wrap up the web plot and digitizing portion of this video by recommending that you save the project. So in the event that you ever do need to maybe go back and double check that you digitize your graphs appropriately, maybe add more points to help your curve fit a little bit better or to include other curves in your plot. It's good to pull up the saved project from your folder versus having to redo this whole process again. So all I'm gonna do is save the project by labeling as left to drag ratio digitization. And I'm just gonna download as a JSON, but feel free to download as what you think would be best. So as you can see now that this has downloaded, and if I were to click on the file, you can then look at the load project and you're then able to choose the file name that we have here and reload it and continue either working on it or modify it. Now we'll proceed with the math app portion of the video and I will be going over how to use the curve fitting toolbox to use the data that we collected using web plot digitizer and curve fit that data to get some expressions and equations that we can then use in our code. For this portion, as I mentioned, we'll be going over how to use the curve fitting tool. Now, in order to check if you have it, I would go to the apps portion of the code. And as you can see here on mine, I see a curve fitter. Now you may be wondering, what if I don't see mine? I would first check the different codes under here by expanding it and checking to see if maybe it is installed. However, if you have installed MATLAB using the default settings, it's notable that you probably don't have this installed package. It is not in the default settings and you need to manually install it if you do not have so or have not used it prior to this video, which is really easy to do. All you have to do is go to get more apps. And as you can see, a pop-up will occur where we're able to not only install the curve fitting toolbox that we'll be using, but any other additional tools that may be helpful for you in the future. So all I'm gonna do is type in curve fitting toolbox. And as you can see, it is this one right here. So when I click on it, I'm able to download it, but since mine is already installed, you can then double check it by seeing this green installed button. And once this is installed, we are then ready to proceed with the next portion. So once the curve fitting tool has been added to your apps package, we're then able to extract the data that we used in our web plot data. So as we recalled, I saved the data in this file named web plot data. So the first thing that I'm actually gonna be doing is going to the home tab and importing this data. So I'm gonna be selecting the web plot data and I'm gonna click open. So what I'm gonna be doing now is actually changing the output type, I'm going to change it to column vectors. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I want MATLAB to save the data as individual columns as opposed to as a table as a whole. And that'll just make it a little bit easier when using the curve fitting toolbox rather than having to work with the whole table. So before I do that, I'm just going to quickly rename these variables here for my uh, references. So as you recall from our data plot, our x axis corresponds to true airspeed. I'm just going to write true airspeed underscore zero, where our y corresponds to our lift to drag ratio. So I'm just gonna label this 
as L underscore D underscore zero. And I'm gonna be doing the same thing here. So I'm gonna be writing true airspeed 15,000. And this one as L underscore D underscore 15,000. And now that our column vectors have been labeled, I'm gonna click on import selection and I'm gonna import the data. And as you can see, now we have four columns that have been imported. So now we have these four variables that are gonna be added to our workspace. So if I close this new tab, now we are back to our main MathLab page and we can see in the workspace now we have added the new variables that we have imported. Now at this stage, it's important to note that if we do not save these variables and we clear our workspace, these variables will not be saved when we try to open the code again. But so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be saving as, and I'm just gonna rename as the same name, I like to name my files the same as their variable name just for consistency. And I'm gonna be saving it as a mat file, which is easily imported and readable to MATLAB. So I'm just gonna do save. And as you can see now in my current folder, now I have this mat file that contains the L over D variable that was saved in our workspace. And I'm gonna repeat this for the other three variables. Now all the variables that I have included are now added to my folder. So they are now saved and I could always just execute them here by loading them into the code by using the load command and then having the file name. So in this case, I can just type in L underscore D, the name of the file, the file type, and then I'm able to manually load them into the workspace. Okay, so now to actually work with the curve fitting toolbox, I'm going to go to app. I'm going to click on curve fitter and the curve fitter window should now pop up and it'll look something like this. And now the first part that I'm gonna show you is how to curve fit a single line of data. So what I'm gonna be doing now is selecting the data that I want to use. So I'm gonna hit select data. And now for the fit name, I'm just gonna write height equals zero feet. And I'm gonna select my X and Y data points. So if you recall, our true error speed was our X and our Y data is our L over D. And as we can see, now we have the points that we initially plotted. So I'm going to now close this. So now we can look at this blue line. Now this blue line is the line that's gonna show us how closely we can get to these points. Now we have different tools up here that will allow us to curve fit best to what this graph looks like. So we have our polynomials, our exponentials. We have others such as power and the interpolant. Now, for this case, I can look at this graph and see that it kind of resembles a second degree polynomial up until this curvature. So we can actually change the degrees that we'll be using by just changing it to one, two, three, four, and so on. So I will be hitting two. And as you can see, now we have what looks more like a quadratic. And if we use a polynomial degree of three, now we can see our graph is starting to resemble a curve that we most likely see is a little bit more fitting to the plot that we currently have. And you can play around with this and other tools until you find one that satisfies your equations. Now that I found an, a polynomial that I can use to as closely curve fit this data. So you'll see that I still have these points, but they extend beyond the data that I will be using this for. So it should be okay to continue to use. 
So now from here, what we can do is one of two things. As you can see, we have a linear model polynomial that showcases the polynomial with the different coefficients. So what we can do is either choose to export this equation or simply copy and paste this linear model and its given coefficients in our plot digitization. So I'm gonna try both methods. The first is by copying this linear model. Now I have copied the previous polynomial expression that we have from our curve fitting tool by replacing the coefficient and then just copying it as shown here in the linear model. So that's the equation here. So if you're writing a code, I left them as x's and labeled my x as the airspeed. We just run our code by hitting run. As we can see, now we have our L over D of 12.005H. Now, another way in which we can do this without having to write the full expression in our code is simply by exporting to the workspace. So I'm going to name this as L underscore D underscore zero. And I'm going to hit curve. And I'm going to hit OK. Now, if we go to our workspace, we should see that we have our L underscore D underscore zero curve. And now this is our curve fitted data. So now our expression is contained inside of this workspace. And similar to the other variables that we had, I'm actually going to save this workspace. So that we have it for future references. So now we have that here saved as a mat file. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to clear the variables to show you how we would go about loading in this expression. Now I'm gonna load it. I'm gonna type in the name of the function as well as file type, which is a mat file. And now when I hit run, we can see that it's now loaded into the workspace. Now, how would I go about actually using this? Well, I can assign my L over D as equal to, now recall this expression contains this equation inside. So what I can do is now call out the value for a certain value of X which we defined as 250. So now all I do is assign that value and hit run. And as you can see, our expression is now contained inside. So now I'm going to be demonstrating how we can use this curve fitting tool to interpolate between two lines. So initially, as we can see, this curve here has at zero feet and 15,000 feet. But what if we wanted to find the L over D at 10,000 feet? Well, there's two ways that we can go about finding that out. One of them would be to curve fit each expression individually and then use the interpolation equation to interpolate both points to find your interpolated L over D at the H that is contained between both lines. Now, alternatively, you can create a 3D modeled plot in the curve fitting diagram that will allow you to take in both variables and similarly to this second option where we can save our workspace in a map file, we can then use this technique and save our expression inside of this map file and then use two variables to call out our given function. So I'm going to demonstrate that right now. 
So if we're going to be creating a 3D plot, we need to create three axes. If we go back to our original web plot data, we have our X, Y, and we have them separated by height. Now we can combine this data into three columns by having all our X's be in a single column, all our Y's be in a single column, and our height be defined as the third column. And that's what I'm going to be doing in a new Excel file. If you recall, our X is just going to be our airspeed, our true airspeed. Our Y is our L over D. And our Z will correspond to our height. So I'm just going to highlight my data and copy and paste it. And this is for a height of zero feet. And now I'm going to be adding the one for 15,000 feet to our current data set. Now that we have our three columns, I'm just going to save this. So now I'm going to go back to MATLAB. And as you can see, now our data is ready to use. So I'm going to close that. And remember, in order to import the data, your files must be closed. So I'm just going to go ahead and go back to home and import the data. So I'm going to select data 3D. Same as before, I'm just going to have column vectors and I'm going to be importing. And now we have the following variables. We have our true airspeed, our L over D and our height. And if we go to our workspace, now we can see that our variables have loaded. And once again, for the sake of remaining consistent and having all our data available to us, I'm just go, go ahead and save these variables. And now we are ready to proceed to the curve fitting technique. So I'm going to go and open the curve fitter tool once again. Going to be selecting the data that we need. Now, similarly to the previous example, I'm going to be importing our X, Y, and Z data. The only difference now is I want my Z data to be the output. I'm going to assign my X input to be the true airspeed. My Y data is actually going to be my height. And my Z data is going to be the data that I want outputted from the code. So when you call out the function similar to the first case, I will be inputting in parentheses my X and Y, which correspond to the true airspeed and the height. So for the Z, I want the output to be the L over D. And now we have a nice curve. So if you can see, the curve that you'll be using for this type of 3D surface should be interpolant fit. And in this case, you can see here on the right side, we have a method. Now, the best way to think about this is when you graph a 3D surface such as this, you know you've done it correctly or to the best of your ability if the curve looks like some sort of thin plate. So as you can see here, there are no lines that are crisscrossing each other, but instead we have a nice surface that was generated. And if we look at our goodness of fit, it's a pretty good fit. So now that this is done, we can move on to the next step and export. So I'm going to export to the workspace. Now I'm going to label this as L E curve. Okay. And now that I'm done, I'm also going to be saving my work. 
by saving this curve fit. So I'm gonna be labeling this as curve underscore fitting 3D plot. So if I ever need to pull up this file again, I don't have to repeat the process and I can simply pull this file directly into the curve fitter. As you can see, now we have our LD underscore curve, which is the one that we just saved. And the equation and the curve that we are using are now fitted and nested inside of this S fit. So now we can use this S fit and we can save it to our existing variables. So I'm going to save that. And again, I'm going to be assuming an airspeed of 250. I'm going to be assuming a height of 10,000. Now, if you recall, this is method one, L underscore D is equal to L D underscore curve. And remember how we plotted our X and our Y input. So in this case, our X is our true airspeed input. And our height value was our Y input, which in this case will be our H. And all we have to do now is run. I'm slowly gonna run this section. So I'm gonna hit run section. And we have an L underscore D of 14.1674. It's not necessary to use this curve fitting tool to make a 3D surface. Alternatively, you can interpolate both curves by having two separate curves. So in this case, we have an expression for our L over D at a height of zero. So the second method includes making an L over D expression for our curvature at 15,000 and then interpolating our point using both of these equations. So I'm gonna be demonstrating how to do the second method. If you have multiple expressions, it is helpful to organize it using an if loop. So if your height is concentrated between these two parameters, then you can curve fit between these two points. If we were to run this code, we wouldn't need to create separate cases. However, if you are choosing to manually interpolate between two curves at a time, it will be necessary to input a different height. So now that I have all the different cases listed out, I am actually just going to copy and paste our polynomial equation that we developed for h equals zero and pasting that here. And I will curve fit the data as well for the h equals 15 in the same way I did for h equals zero. And I will also paste that in. I have filled the equations for h equals zero and h equals 15,000. I will copy and paste those equations in this section. And those will give me my points that we can then use to interpolate at the height of our choice, zero, 15,000. And now those will give me two parameters. So we'll have our X and our Y's. And if you recall, we can then use this interpolation equation. So Y is equal to Y1 plus X minus X1 times Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So I'm just gonna put this into MATLAB. And here I will just type in the same equation for the interpolation and we should be set to go to interpolate between these two lines. Now I have written 
the interpolation equation with the x's corresponding to the height and the y's being replaced by my L over D at zero and 15,000. And now you can run this code and it should yield results that are similar, not exact to the ones described in method one. So I will go ahead and do that now and we can compare. So I'm just gonna label this as method one, and then method two. And I'm just gonna clear the command window so we can see that clearly. I'm gonna run this section. And if we see the results of method one and method two, we can see that they're within a 5% error range between each other. So again, to just quickly summarize, method one can be used at any given of the points since it tends to extract the ends and then interpolate in between. While method two must consider the different conditions, whether it is between the two bounds that you have set or if it is at the exact bounds, so at zero and 15,000. An effective method of approaching this would be using if loops as opposed to method one. You can just save the curve fitting data and just use your saved workspace equation in your code. Now, just to conclude, when you are using this code, just remember that your workspace is not saved. So before even beginning to initiate your code, I would actually recommend including a section where you load in your parameters. So I am going to load in, since I'm using the LD underscore curve mat file, I'm just gonna be using that. And now if I were to clear all of my variables from the workspace, the code should still hold. So I'm just gonna run this section one more time. And as you can see, this load command now loads in the curve map file that we originally saved. And I would recommend doing so every single time you go about using method one.